This is part two of how to make a histogram in Chart.js. So I assume you have continued with the previous part. If not, I would highly recommend you first to watch part one. All right. So what we're going to do now is here, we're going to adjust a few items. So we have this here, but we need to work on a few items here. We need to move this to the side here now by using some commands on the x-axis. And after that, we can start to give some labels at the side here. And we want to break these steps into bigger chunks of three hours every single time. So let's start and do that. So we have here, and what we're going to do here is the following. We're going to say a comma. And here what we want to do is first of all the offset. We're going to remove an offset here. We say offset from false. And the reason why we do offset on false here is to remove any sites that we have. If I refresh here, now you can see we have that. And this will be important because later on we'll be working on this more and more. All right. So this is will be important. You can see now it's chops away part of it. And later on you can see what will happen. And I'm going to remove this begin at zero. It's true. Remove that. All right, so nothing happens here yet. So the next part what we're going to do here is a comma, and then we say here grid. And in the grid, we will say here offset, and here as well, at, set it at false. So the moment we do this, and then we, all right, make sure we have a comma here, or everything is fine, no need for commas. We have them here. We refresh, and now the moment we do this, you can see something happened with the lines. Well, let's go back here. Let's set this on true. Just pay attention here. As you can see here, now the lines were between, or just basically the value is above the uh, below the bar, and the lines were between. But now we're going to move it that the lines are exactly matching with the values. This is why we do false here. So we set it on false, and now the lines and the value are matching together. All right. So we've got this. So now what we want to do is we want to put in some uh, labels at the side. So we can say here, comma, and then we say here the following. And that is the title. We say a title here, and in the title we can say display true. By default, it's set on false. And then here we can put in the text. So what is the text we want to display? So let's assume here the following. We'll see here, or we will set this on our, and this on the side here will be the amount of customers. Imagine we want to know how busy it is very similar to what we just what we saw in the previous video let's say here you could see here how busy would it be on opening hours in a shop for example now i have no idea i'm just making a sample very similar to that is perfect so what we're going to do here is exactly the same we're going to set up here these values and that's what we're going to do so we say here will be hours and then we will do as well here on the y-axis exactly identical we're going to paste this in here, the title. All right. And once we did that, make sure that this is all properly indented. All right. Then here we say visitors or customers, I guess visitors. So eventually we'll be able to see here, we have 10 visitors on this specific hour, etc., etc. All right. Let's play around now with a few items here. What we want to do here as well is we want to control the hour display. It means that we have to add up your ticks. So we say ticks here. And then once we have the we say here the step size. That will be to be exact three. So every three hours we should see something. So right now it doesn't show anything at all. Don't worry about this because now we're going to work on the data points here. So the data points here can be very tricky in the beginning, but once it's set on correctly with the right amount of values, it starts to look very consistent. So let's put in here some items here. So let's say here, this would be 0 0.5. This is usually what we have to do, let's say. All right. And then we're going to copy this. I'm just going to copy this multiple times, including the comma here. We want to have in total of 24 items. So this is six, all right. That will be 18. Well, sorry, no, that will be 12. Then we have here, this will be 18, and probably here the last one. Well, maybe I can just move this. There we are. All right. So we have this, and then what I will do is here, I'll just put in some values here and see if this works. And the reason I'm putting it here between is we need to eventually position it correctly. And to do this, we need to have first some different data points. 
So I'm going to put in here from 1 until, or from 0 until 24, or basically 23 would be more than enough. So this would be 14. So I'm using here the military time. Uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. All right, if you are safe this now, refresh. We now have very nicely divided our hours of visitors. And let's assume that this shop is like McDonald's. It's a very busy store, 24 hours open. And at midnight, it's 100 customers usually here, then 200 customers. And here it drops off to 50 customers per hour. And then here at 6, 7 o'clock it starts to get busy. And then goes here. I'm just making up some things. And then after we have 300, 400, and 500 customers. 500 customers. Here will be 700 customers during lunchtime. Uh, 700 customers, 750. And then here it drops down to 500, and then it goes down to 400, and then here it's uh, lunchtime again or dinner time, 800, 800, 800, and then here I'll just put in some. I just make up some numbers. I don't even know whatever I'm saying, whatever I say is factual. I guess not. I, I assume that there's far more people, but. The goal here is just to have some different data points. All right, let's save this now and refresh. You can see here now, we can see what's the busy moments in the store here. Beautiful. All right, so we have this now. And what we can do here is eventually start to play around because right now we're almost done here with our histogram, but we're still missing one thing and that will be eventually in the next video and that's the following here. Because right now, if you go here and you hover over the values, what do you see? Well, you see here 13.5, for example, here, 12.5, which doesn't make sense. The reason why we put in 12.5, by the way, if you want to understand why, because we want to pinpoint the center. From the center on, it starts to get the entire block here. That's what it does, which is one entire point. However, we want to display here then from 12 to 1, and here from 1 to 2, and from 2 to 3, etc., etc., which makes far more sense. We really have so many visitors. All right, so we'll do that in the next video. We'll explore how we can modify the tooltip so it will look like very nice as in a histogram. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.